welcome back to the uh, course of plant developmental biology. So, in last class we, we were discussing reverse genetics based approaches uh, which we are being which we are taking for to study the developmental. So, in that class we have covered identification and isolation of uh, genes for developmental functions. Now, we started the functional genomics based approaches. So, uh, in, in functional genomics based approaches what we discussed the first step was monitoring gene expression and now so we have seen how to check the expression pattern of individual genes. Now, we will mostly focus on the global genes how to study the expression pattern of the global genes and what are the way how to study the expression pattern. The important thing here is that you can again fix the problem. So, the main goal of uh, genomics or global gene expression analysis is to identify the differential genes in different conditions. It can be different organs, it can be different tissues, it can be different stages, it can be different conditions between a wild type and mutants, any, any, any combination whatever you can choose with respect to the development and then you take the genomics based approaches and identify all the genes which are differentially expressed in between two conditions, two organs and whatever. And there are many uh, way to study a differential gene expression. So, I will list some of them here, but we will focus on only few. So, uh, these were uh, uh, way to study first was the serial analysis of gene expression says here uh, people started by obtaining some short sequence tags from a large number of cDNA clones and they then they were sequencing it and identifying the differential gene expression pattern. Then another way was uh, differential display RT-PCR. Here what people used to do, they used to take a two population of total RNA, they used to make cDNA, they used to run a gel and then try to identify which particular band is missing in one condition and present in another condition or vice versa and then they used to cut that band amplify the fragment clone sequence and identify what are the genes. Another way of doing was the substructive hybridization this was PCR based amplification of only cDNA fragment that differs between two conditions. And so, basically here what you used to do there were two population of the messenger RNA you make cDNA then do the subtraction subtract after subtraction you identify or you isolate only those populations which are differentially expressed and then specifically you can amplify them and then identify them. Then the techni technique this technique was very widely used in, in most of the genomics based expression uh, differential expression pattern analysis which was microarray. Microarray uh, was the technique where small fragment or small oligo single stranded uh, oligos were spotted on a chip and then the total RNA may be, uh, was isolated from a particular condition to identify the differential expression. We will see micro RNA, uh, uh, micro array in uh, great detail how this has been used and this is one of the most used technology in the plant developmental biology. And now recently next generation sequencing has actually change the entire scenario. Now, we are doing lot of RNA sequencing and this has lot of benefits over the microarray. So, these are the different methods which is which are being used to study the differential expression pattern in different conditions or different developmental processes. So, I, I before going to the microarray and RNA sequencing in detail I would give some of the typical examples of different technologies which was used. For example, if you look this this research here the transcript profiling was done in rice seedling using says as a method. So, this was used and people have identified the differential uh, expression here. Then uh, this is one example where differential display RT-PCR was done. So, this is uh, mats box containing uh, transcription factor in rice and what was important here that this gene which is MATS1 it was expressed in sepal equivalent which in case of rice is lemma and pelea, but it was not expressed in the inner organ. Uh, 
but when the gene was mutated when uh, this gene was silenced the effect was also seen in the inner organs inner floral organs for example lordicules stamens then this was the question that if the gene is not present in this tissue how it is regulating so one of the possibility was that maybe it is activating because at very early stage it was expressed throughout the floral primordia so it was hypothesized that maybe it is activating some early regulators at very early stage whose expression is basically there in inner floral organs and regulating it to identify such kind of gene uh, the differential display rt pcr was uh, taken up and then one of such genes was identified which was osmgs3 and it was shown that actually osmgs3 was expressed in the floral inner floral organs so this is again if you look this is northern blot and if you look the expression pattern of osmgs3 you can see that in wild type uh, leaf sheath it is not expressed whereas in the young panicle panicle is inflorescence in case of rice it has a very high level of expression but if you look a panicle which is mutant panicle where mats one is uh, down regulated the expression of osmgs3 is also disappears which means that first thing that there is a organ specific or tissue specific regulation of this gene the gene is only expressed in the panicle not in the leaf sheath and its expression or its activation is dependent on the mats one so this is one example of differential display rt pcr then subtractive hybridization was used in this study where they have done a comparative transcript profiling of gene expression between seedless uh, variety and its cd wild type during floral organ development and uh, I, I will not go in detail then the technique which i was going to talk about is microarray so as i said that microarray is a kind of chip so this kind of chip was generated and this was very widely used in the post genomic era before rna sequencing once the genome was sequenced we identified the genes we identified the sequence of all the genes then those uh, genes the probes for those genes were uh, designed and these probes were spotted in in these chips so for every gene we had a kind of probe and then there was two way of uh, identify the differential expression what was the two color way and one color way so in one color way what you have to do let's assume that you want to test a wild type sample which is your test or mutant sample so you want to identify the genes which are differentially expressed between this wild type and this mutant then what you can do you can extract total rna from the wild type total rna from the uh, mutants then you label this rna and one way of labeling was the biotin labeled crna synthesis both were basically labeled so entire rna population in these two conditions we are labeled and then this labeled uh, crna we are used to do the hybridization in the chips so now this chips contains uh, 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 global genes all the genes represented in a equal amount now since let's assume that there is a gene a which is more in case of uh, wild type but it is getting uh, down regulated in case of mutant then you are expecting more crna in wild type less crna in in mutant and when you hybridize on the chip you are expecting more signal for that probe in case of wild type whereas less signal in case of mutant and then if you compare the signal intensity you do the data acquisition scanning and if you calculate the absolute value of hybridization you can identify the difference in the expression pattern of gene a between wild type as well as mutant then another way of analysis was that let's assume the similar case you have wild type rna you have mutant rna and then you take total rna from both the uh, the sample and then you label them uh, with two different dye for example this is psi 5 this is psi 3 psi 5 will give red color psi 3 will give uh, green color and then you take equal amount of total crna and hybridize on the same uh, chip so basically the difference between he, uh, these two methods was here both the 
cRNAs were cRNAs were labeled with the same uh, label whereas they are labeled with the different labels here they were uh, probe they were hybridized on two different independent chips here both are being hybridized on the same chip so let's assume if there is a chip which is for gene a now normally if the expression label of a is same in wild type and mutant then we are expecting same amount of psi phi label crna and psi 3 label crna to go and hybridize with this particular probe so you are expecting same amount of red signal same amount of green signal and the result will be yellow signal here but if any one of them are uh, differentially uh, present for example if expression is more in the wild type then you are expecting more red signal than the green and then the color of this spots will change it will be more towards the red if gene is down regulated then it will be more towards the green so based on this uh, color and then the quantification you can actually calculate the fold change between wild type and and mutant for all these kinds these techniques you can also use for the different stages it's not only in wild type and mutant for example if you take this this particular case so where what people have studied people have studied the genes which are differentially expressed at different developmental stages of rice panicle development or flower development so for example if you take this stage is this is stage 0 which is basically vegetative phase and this is your shoot apical meristem extract total rna from vegetative phase and then you this is a transition from vegetative to the reproductive phase then after transition this inflorescence is undergoing a different stage of development here primary branch meristem and then secondary branch meristem secondary spikelet meristem all these developmental stages it is going across so what people have done they have taken rna from here from all these different stages and they have performed the microarray analysis in great detail and this this how they could actually identify several things first thing they could identify the gene which is present in a particular developmental stage but absent in the developmental uh, different developmental stages or a particular genes how its dynamic expression pattern is across the development for example some genes might be zero here and then they are suddenly getting activated and they are maintained across the development or they are activated in this developmental do, uh, domain and then they are going down so this is a basically dynamic expression pattern you can analyze analyze using this technology and this everything we are doing at the global level and we can identify for example if the, some of the genes they has been tested here so you can check this is rtpcr analysis if you see the gene lex the gene lex is very low at uh, zero stage but across the stages 1 2 3 4 5 the expression level is increasing whereas if you take this fgp which is frizzy panicle this is the expression starts or activates only from the stage 4 onwards and continue in the stage 5 it is not present in the early stage whereas this mat 3 it is getting activated in stage 5 so so th th this is how the uh, microarray was extremely useful in studying this kind of genome wide uh, differential expression analysis this is another example of uh, microarray which was used and here you can look here that they have focused their study on the mats box containing genes why i am focusing uh, most on the mats box containing gene because this was the a class which is well established to regulate lot of developmental processes they are very very important with respect to the plant development and here they have taken large number of tissues mature leaf roots seven day old seedling and then this panicle different size of panicle different size of panicle or inflorescence signifies different developmental stages in case of this one and then they have checked the expression pattern through microarray analysis and what they can identify there are a lot of genes so if you look the expression is here so if green is less expression red is high expression and then you can look that a particular gene if you grow across the 
different organs you can see their expression how the expression patterns are changing from one developmental stage to another developmental stage or one tissue to another tissue. So, this, this was uh, important study that now uh, nowadays it is RNA sequencing this is, this is next generation sequencing uh, is very cheap and very easily available. So, now people are doing RNA sequencing and RNA sequencing has some advantages over the microarray. First advantage is that for microarray to generate the chips you have to have the uh, sequence information which means that uh, the genomes of the organism has to be sequenced then and only then you can define uh, probes for the chip. But in RNA sequencing the genome even the genome is not sequenced it can be uh, studied through RNA sequencing. Second important thing one very very important process in eukaryotic organism is alternative RNA splicing. Alternative RNA splicing is like if a gene has multiple introns. So, let us assume this is intron 1, intron 2, intron 3. So, there are a large number of gene regulation occurs at the level of splicing. So, alternative splicing essentially provides an opportunity to generate more than one type of protein from a single gene just by alternatively splicing. Uh, uh, the different introns. For example, in one messenger RNA you can generate from here if you splice all the introns, then you can generate a messenger RNA where you do not splice intron 1 or you do not splice intron 2 or you do not splice intron 3 or you splice uh, individually or you can even skip the introns, you can splice this exon along with the intron. So, this provides a large number of different transcripts from the same gene and it is very difficult or it is very challenging to uh, keep probes for all splice variant in, in the chip uh, in the microarray experiment. So, it was very challenging because if you do not know how many splice variant exist for a particular gene it is very difficult because normally when you are designing the chip you used to keep one or maybe two or maybe three chips for a particular uh, three oligos for a particular gene. But if there is some intron here you will not have intron or splice variant specific chips. But in case of RNA sequencing basically it, uh, it can capture all the splice variants. So, if you look the technique how, how RNA sequencing functions. So, basically what we do in the RNA sequencing you extract total messenger RNA and then you can uh, specifically remove messenger RNA from the total RNA. How you can do that? You all know that messenger RNA they have uh, o a poly A tail at the 3 prime end and then you can use oligo DT tagged with some kind of bits and using this system you can specifically uh, remove messenger RNA from the total RNA population and then you use this, this RNA and you can do the fractionation, you can make a small fragment of RNA and then use some random primers. Random primers are basically small 6 nucleotide long single nucleated primer with different sequences. So, it can randomly go and bind different places and then you can make first strand cDNA synthesis, second strand cDNA synthesis. So, basically you are generating a different different small fragments cDNAs double standard cDNAs. And then one important thing what you can do you can put the phosphate normally the primers they do not have phosphate at their end. So, then you can uh, put provide phosphate because if you have to use this for further ligation process if they do not have phosphate at their end then they cannot make a phosphodiester bond. So, you can do the end repair put the phosphate and another thing what you can do you can add flanking A this you can do using poly A polymerase and then if you add this A tail this will provide you to take this fragment and add some adapter. So, you can ligate adapter this adapter can have a stretch of T. So, T and A they will go and they will uh, anneal to each other and then uh, you can perform a ligation reaction. So, essentially what you are generating you are generating double stranded DNA fragments with adapter at both the end. 
and then you, you know the sequence of this adapter, you can use this adapter sequence and you can take and sequence this entire cDNA population. This is uh, very widely used these days and uh, this can be used to identify. So, if you take two different population of RNA, two different population of then you can generate two different population of fragmented cDNA and if you sequence them and compare them, you can identify differential uh, expression level of different RNAs. So, again I will give some of the examples where RNA sequencing uh, was used to identify differential expression pattern. For example, if you take this, so here different stage fruits we are taken and total RNAs were extracted and RNA sequencing was done and you can clearly see different genes and their expression pattern. For example, if you look here, so uh, if you look this gene or in, in any of this gene, this has a very low expression at this stage, but if you come here by the end of this stage, the expression level is really going very high. So, this tells that there are a differential expression of different type of genes. And here I, I, you can see that this is a heat map of RNA sequencing data which involves the shoot development. So, there they have taken different types of shoots here, secondary shoots, primary shoots, and then there is some something called mother bearing shoots and they have extracted total RNA and they have performed RNA sequencing across these different types of shoots and they have identified uh, different tissue specific genes which are present here. This is another example where comparative RNA sequencing analysis was done for transcriptome uh, dynamics during petal development in, in rose, one of the rosaceous uh, member and where you can see that they have taken different stages of the pet petals from the different developmental stage and they have performed the RNA sequencing analysis and they could identify a different genome uh, expression pattern and uh, you can see they can identify here all these uh, different types of transcription factor depending on your study you can focus on transcription factor. So, you can identify all the transcription factors which are differentially expressed or anything any other kind of transcription factor. Another way if you take this kind of uh, RNA sequencing and RNA sequencing you can combine with a different other technique. So, it, it is not uh, stand alone technique and then you can perform a more uh, specified or more defined way to generate uh, RNA sequencing data. For example, if you have some kind of developmental stages maybe I will I will draw here. So, for example, if you want to study a developmental stage at a particular let us assume that you want to study root developmental stage and you know that root development occurs through different stages of the development. The first stage in the lateral root uh, branching is that the specification of some some cells. So, these are the mature cells now they are taking stem cell property and then these cells start the cell division they undergo the process of cell division and they generate some kind of primordia which is called root primordia and then this root, root primordia undergo the process of cell differentiation it start root specific differentiation program and then finally, the primordia is emerging out. Now, if you want to really identify the genes you can collect this tissue very specifically there are lot of techniques available one of the technique which is called laser capture micro dissection you can use and you can collect all this uh, primordia and then extract total RNA from this primordia and then you can identify or you can take some, some wild type sample and the mutant sample when a particular transcription factor a particular gene is missing and you want to identify what are the genes which are whose expressions are getting affected when you mutate a particular gene then you can take total RNA, you can do tissue specific total RNA extraction and then perform RNA sequencing to identify the differential genes which are present in these two particular condition or two particular mutants. So, this is, is uh, uh, analyzing expression pattern where we have tried to study today how to uh, identify differential expression pattern. Now, 
for doing spatial and temporal expression pattern analysis there are several method which we will discuss more in the in the next class but to just briefly uh, introduce them one way of doing is that to study rna localization which we are going to do by rna rna in situ hybridization then you can do protein localization you can use some specific antibody and localize uh, you can study their specific localization in across the tissues and then uh, then you can do a kind of promoter trapping where you can use a kind of promoterless reporter gene uh, and and you can identify if a promoter or you can do transcriptional fusion you can do translational fusion so maybe we will stop this class here and in next class we will uh, discuss in detail uh, how to study spatial and temporal expression pattern and functional characterization of gene through reverse genetics based approaches thank you very much